Thank you. Um, good, after good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this talk about Securify. Securify is a smart contract verification tool uh, which was developed by the people that you can see on this slide. It was developed at ETH Zurich, which is a leading technical university in Switzerland. And you can learn more about Securify by visiting the various links that will appear in the slides. And I will make these slides available afterwards, after this talk. So first, let me, let me uh, uh, tell you the reasoning behind Securify and motivate the creation of Securify. So most of you are aware, I assume, in this room of the um, various security flaws that have plagued Ethereum since the beginning. So the most famous one remains the DAO bug, which eventually led the developers to, uh, to a hard fork of the chain so as to revert the state, the state changes created by the attackers. Another more recent security flaw was the multi-sig parity bug, which resulted in 30 million uh, in Ethereum um, robbed by, uh, by attackers. So let me go into details of these uh, second flaws more, more precisely. So it was a case of unprivileged right to storage. Here I have a really simple example of, uh, of this kind of flow. So just keep in mind for all the examples that are going to, to come that these are meant only to illustrate the, the flaws and not, uh, not meant to, to have a real logic in themselves. So as you see here, it's really a toy example. So this is a wallet contract which contains a storage variable, owner, which uh, specify the owner of this wallet. And there are two functions, this uh, initialization func function init wallet, which can change the owner, and this withdraw function through which the owner can uh, actually withdraw money. So you can see here, if this works, um, so you can see here that there, there's actually a check to prevent anybody else from, um, from, uh, from withdrawing money. But the problem in that case is that anybody can actually uh, change the, um, the owner variable which is a problem since it, because it makes uh, the check useless. So this is, this is in a sense, the, the multi-sig parity bug. That is, you allow anybody to write to, to your storage, even though you rely on it for crucial operations. So of course, the exploit in the multi-sig parity bug was much more complicated because the contract itself was more sophisticated, but the, the basic uh, vulnerability is the same. So there are many more security bugs that are possible with the Ethereum platform. One of them is the, is the uh, category of unexpected Ether flows. For instance, when you expect Ether to go to your contract but don't provide any means to withdraw it. So you end up with locked e Ether in your, in your contract. In circuit coding, such as the multi-sig parity bug, so providing ways to write to your storage without checking whether the user should be able to do that or not. The use of unsafe input, whenever you use, for instance, timestamp or block numbers and pretend that these are random uh, variables and even feed them into cryptographic functions, uh, for instance, to create a pseudo-random generator, then this is bound to failure because these variables can be um, biased uh, by miners. So for instance, a, a miner can decide to not to process your transaction right away and this is, is gonna be delayed by at least one block which is gonna result in a higher timestamp. Reentered method calls, so this is basically the DAO bug. And manipulating Ether flows via transaction reordering. So this is a bit specific to the Ethereum platform uh, where all the transaction can up, can, where all the transaction can, uh, can be processed concurrently. So uh, for the details of this one, I have uh, another toy example, this token contract where you have two storage variables. Um, one is uh, the price of this token, and the other is the, uh, the owner of, uh, of this contract. And so you can set the price where only the owner can, uh, can, uh, can change this price. And the second one is a sell token where some Ether is transferred. As you can, as you can see here, a user can, uh, can call this function according to a given price. So what happens in practice is that a user can read the, the price variable on the blockchain. Everything is, is public and you don't, even, you don't even need to create a transaction to read the, the value of this uh, variable. But what happens here is that once a user decides to, uh, to call this function, the owner can still uh, call another function. So what would happen is that the, the owner would realize that there is a transaction pending with this, um, this, this function. 
and then decide, okay, maybe I want to increase the price or, or lower the price depending on what he wants to do. So the thing is, when you have a transaction pending, you have no guarantee that it's going to be executed within the context uh, that, you, that you just read. And so in a sense, the two operations do not commute and you shouldn't expect them to commute either. So how to, how to detect these kind of bugs? Uh, I'm going to talk about automated security analysis as a way to, to make sure that these bugs uh, are not implemented in your contracts. So if I were to draw a, a big drawing of all the possible behaviors, um, I, would, I would have some, something with all the possible behaviors and within them uh, a lot of security bugs that you want to avoid when implementing smart contracts. The problem is that you cannot enumerate all possible behaviors. For instance, if you have um, an, in an integer argument in your function, it's going to be you, you cannot uh, call this function with all possible integers and just say, okay, this this trace is faulty. So at one point, you have to to make a trade-off and decide how to um, how to 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 find the the bad behaviors. So the different uh, security analysis approaches that you can have uh, are. Uh, here represented. So the first one would be uh, testing, uh, where you actually try to, to cover one path, and from this one path you're going to extract uh, one trace and, and try to, 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 um, to check whether or not it's faulty and whether or not it corresponds to what you expected. Dynamic symbolic analysis, uh, which uh, is an improvement on, uh, on basic testing, because you're not able to cover way many more paths. So this is a bit uh, testing plus plus if you want. And so you have the same kind of guarantees, uh, that is testing and dynamic analysis report true bugs that actually exist in your, in your code since uh, they provide you with traces of what happened. And, but they can still miss bugs because you have a notion of code coverage which is not equal to 100%. So this is a problem because you're you can never be sure uh, unless you have, co uh, you have covered all your on your code, and that is 100% coverage, you can never be sure that your code doesn't contain any of these bugs. And the last one, and the focus of my talk today, is automated verification, which makes a different trade-off. That is, it can report false alarms, but it has no missed bugs. So what is the current state of the art um, for the Ethereum platform? What do we have, what tools do we have, and why do I suggest today? So on the testing side, we have Truffle and Populous, which are respectively JavaScript and Python frameworks, and help the developer to, to implement their contracts and the associated tests, and deploy them efficiently on the local dev chain. And this way, the developer can run these traces and check their assertions in an efficient manner. On the dynamic analysis uh, side, uh, you have Oyente, which was just presented, and which um, allows the developer to cover way many more um, many more paths in his code execution. And on the automate, automated verification side, we now have Securify that I'm presenting today, and which, as I said, makes a different trade-off. That is, it provides you with strong guarantees that the, the bug uh, that you are trying to find doesn't exist in your code. On the other hand, it can also report that the bug, the bug might exist in your code, and then you have to look at it uh, on your own and tell whether or not it's, it's here. So this is re really a different trade-off from the two previous categories. So if I were to summarize Securify in a few words, I would say that Securify is fully automated, one-click, formal verification system for Ethereum smart contract. So I've prepared a short demo, and so I hope it's going to work. So this is recorded. Uh, okay. So here you have the interface of uh, Securify. You can see that by default there is some uh, example of Solidity code. So this is uh, the website itself. So here you have uh, some Solidity code that you can input that to, so that you can verify it afterwards. You can also feed some bytecode. Or you can also input the address of a, of a contract already deployed on the, on the main chain. So the thing to, to keep in mind here is that Securify actually works on bytecode. So even if you give Solidity code, what is this going to do uh, under the hood? Is this going to compile this code and uh, work on the EVM code? 
So now if we look at this simple example of a simple bank, you can see here that you have a, a storage variable, uh, balances, which contains the, the balances of the users. You have a deposit uh, function, which allows a user to, to deposit, to deposit um, some money. And you also have a withdraw function. So there are many things that are wrong with this code. And I just want to, uh, to show one of the codes. So here you can click formally verify. And you're, you now have a um, security report with various patterns that are checked or not. So the one that I'm interested in right now is gas dependent reentrancy. So basically, basically the DAO bug. So if we click on uh, the, the match line to find out where the, the faulty uh, code is, we're going to see that here there is actually um, uh, um, some ether which is sent and some, some storage value which is, uh, which is set to another uh, value at, uh, after the call. So this means that the attacker, through his fallback function, can call this function again. And this, this function is going to be executed within the same state, which is uh, the DAO bug. So one, one solution for this, uh, for this bug in this particular example is just to remove this line and put it before which is a quick and dirty solution, let's say. So if we click formally verify again, we're going to get uh, another security report. And in that case, you can see that the pattern is no longer checked. So you have made sure that your contract uh, is no longer, um, can no longer be vi victim of, uh, of gas, dependent, gas dependent re -entrancy. And this is a strong guarantee. That is, you're 100% sure of that. There is no notion of code coverage here. Or let's say that the code coverage is 100%. So another example now is this um, flood wallet uh, contract. So here you have um, a storage variable, which is owner, which is the owner of the contract. So this is an example I showed earlier. You, you can initialize the owner of the contract through the first function, init wallet. And the second function allows uh, some transfer of ether if the message sender is the owner. So we're not going to try to to get the security report out of this uh, contract. So if you remember, it's a multi-sig party bug. Um, so you see different patterns. And here, the one that I want to focus on is unprivileged write to storage. So I explained it earlier. It's just that you allow anybody to write to your storage without any check. So if we click on the match line, we're going to see that the faulty line is where you assign the owner to another variable without any, any check. So here's a solution that we can, um, that we can use, and that, that was actually used in the multi-sig parity bug was to have a modifier only owner, which is um, going to make sure that the function will be exe executed only if the, um, if the message sender is the owner. So basically, having the same check as you had in this function, but for the initialization function. So here you click formally verify again. And if you look at the patterns, now it's, it's safe. And so now your contract is guaranteed to be, to be uh, deprived of any unprivileged right to storage. One last uh, example, quickly, is uh, that of the um, token with a changing price. So this is um, the other transaction reordering example that I showed earlier, where you have this set price function through which the owner can change the price. And you also have this sell token which is meant to be used by the, by the user. So if you click formally verify, you're going to see here that the, the that transaction may affect Ether amount. So this is a case of transaction reordering, because the amount that can be sent depends on the, on the variable, which is not constant. So here, a, a quick fix would be to just decide that the price is constant and remove any ability to, um, to change the price in the future. So if we click formally verify again, we're going to make sure that this pattern is checked. So of course, in, in that precise case, it, uh, it removes one feature of the, um, of, the, of the contract that is changing the price. So you would need to, to do a bit more to, uh, to keep this feature. So 
That's it for the demo. Um, so now let's talk a, a bit about what's under the hood of Securify. Um, so first, as I said earlier, Securify works on the EVM code. So you're gonna fit it the EVM binary that you obtain, for instance, by combination of, the, of your Solidity code. And using this, Securify is gonna obtain an intermediate representation. This intermediate representation is only meant to be easier uh, to process by static analysis. The static analysis provides you with uh, a set of basic facts about your code. For instance, you, have, you, you know that this variable is a constant, or you know that this variable is a balance. And so all, all these uh, basic facts are the, the um, number zero of your iterations that you're gonna uh, run to, uh, to have more and more facts. So basically you have a, a set of inference rules. That is, uh, for instance, if A is a constant, B is a constant, and C depends only on A and B, you will know that uh, that C is a constant as well. So you can imagine the sort of inference rules that we have in Securify to obtain more and more useful facts about the code. So iterating over this, you finally obtain a set of facts which is a, a fixed point with respect to these inference rules. And so from, from all these facts, you can infer the security report that I showed to you earlier. And which, uh, so basically you match the facts against patterns, security patterns. So we have a few now and we hope to, to increase the number in the coming, um, coming months. So what is, what is important to remember here is that you, this is fully automated. That is, the only thing you do is at the beginning providing the source code of, um, of your contract. And then Securify is gonna do all this part and provide, provide you with the security report. And this is easily extensible because you can add new patterns uh, along the way. So in our experience so far, it was uh, easy and um, quite, quite quick to add new patterns because the, the, the platform provides any um, sufficient primitives. So our hope is that we won't have to modify Securify that much in the future to provide, um, to provide uh, new, new patterns. So following this experience with Securify and uh, automated tools to uh, analyze smart contracts, a startup was created in Switzerland um, to, to audit blockchains and, and smart contracts. And the loop is really between auditing contracts and seeing the common patterns uh, and try to, to, to extract the, the routine out of it. And so this is uh, really this feedback loop that we try to, to maintain to develop new tools that will, uh, that will improve on the current state of art. So you can check, check out the, the information about chain security if you're interested on this website. So to summarize, I presented Securify, which is fully automated, provides strong guarantees. That is, when it tells you that your, the bug doesn't exist, then it means that it really doesn't exist in your contract. And it's also extensible via a domain-specific language to create new patterns using the primitives already implemented. Um, following the, ex the experience with Securify, um, contact uh, chain security was um, was created a startup that specializes in audit of uh, of smart contracts and automated program analysis and with this I uh, thank you for your attention